This is Dr. Bernstein again with session 12 of our Diabetes University. Uh, I want to continue on the subject of hospitals and emergency rooms giving glucose to diabetics who don't need glucose. I just want to, in this session, tell you one true story to emphasize the significance of this problem. About 10 years ago, I had a patient who was a three-year-old girl. Her father called me one night uh, to say that they were vacationing in Florida and they were in an area of wilderness. Uh, his daughter was vomiting and they had forgotten to bring the medications that I had told them to carry with them all the time uh, for uh, treating sicknesses. Uh, we've gone over these medications uh, previously uh, and they did not bring their Tigan. I have all my patients keep injectable Tigan with them. And uh, he said there's a pharmacy in one hour in one direction and a hospital one hour in the other direction. So I figured that the safest place to go was the hospital, and that's where they went. And about an hour or so later, I get a phone call from the father at the hospital. He's with the uh, director of the pediatric emergency room and uh, put her on the phone to speak to me. The father was on the phone uh, with the director of the pediatric emergency room, a very nice lady doctor who was quite friendly, and she told me that she was about to give the little girl intravenous glucose. I asked her what the girl's blood sugar was, and she didn't know. Uh, but she asked the father, and he said it was 90. I asked the doctor, uh, why do you want to give her glucose? Well, she's been vomiting and is dehydrated and it's a hospital rule that all diabetics who come into the hospital get intravenous glucose. I said, what concentration do, of glucose do you want to give her? She said, D10, which is 10% dextrose. And I said, how much do you want to give her? She said, I want to give her 250 ml every hour. I said, for how many hours? And she said, well, for at least four and certainly until she stops vomiting. I said, uh, do you have any idea how much this much glucose will raise her blood sugar? And she had no idea. So I did the calculations and it came out that it would raise her blood sugar by about 2,000 milligram per deciliter. So she would be way, way over the line for ketoacidosis. I said, well, I said, what do you think will happen if, she, if her blood sugar goes up by 2,000? She says, well, I guess she'll go into ketoacidosis. I said to the doctor, what is the death rate in your hospital for kids with ketoacidosis? And she said, 55%. That's something they all know. And I said, so you want to give this little girl a, a likelihood of 55% of dying when right now the only problem is that she's vomiting? She said, to me, well, that's the hospital rule. I said, what if you write in the chart that you spoke to the child's physician and he said that she could not have intravenous glucose, had to have saline? Would that get you off the hook? And she said, yes, it would. So this is just an illustration of the kinds of things that we're up against and how these hospitals can be so determined to give glucose to people who shouldn't have glucose. Uh, we'll see you at the next session, which I think will be number 13. 
Thanks for watching and good luck. The bulk of what you've heard on this video uh, appears in my book, Dr. Bernstein's Diabetes Solution, which is available at uh, most internet and local bookstores. It is published by the Hachette Book Group. I'd like to remind you that we have monthly free teleseminars every month at the site AskDrBernstein.net. Doctor is spelt D-R, so AskDrBernstein.net for a free monthly teleseminar. Uh, sign up a day or two in advance so that you get a reserved seat. Good luck and thanks for listening.